The first example of a precipitation reaction I want to look at is I want to predict what happens when I mix an aqueous solution of strontium acetate with an aqueous solution of potassium sulfate. And again, I want to do a molecular equation, a complete ionic equation, and a net ionic equation. So let's get started. Strontium is SR with a 2 plus. And acetate is CH3CO2 with a minus charge. So strontium acetate is going to be SR CH3 CO2 2. And we're told that that's going to be aqueous to start. Potassium is K plus, and sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So potassium sulfate has to be K2SO4, and we're told that that's aqueous. Here's our setup for a double replacement reaction. Two sets of dance partners, and we're going to swap partners. So the strontium now is going to go and dance with the sulfate. Now I have a plus 2 and a minus 2, so they just come together to make SRSO4. And the potassium and the acetate will come together, and I've got a plus one and a minus one, so that's just going to be KCH3CO2. So those are my products of the double replacement reaction. The next thing we should do is we should balance it. I see that I have two acetates on the reactant side and two potassiums on the reactant side. So to balance that, I'm going to need two potassium acetates on the product side to balance the potassiums and acetates. But everything else is balanced. Now what we can do is we can look at the solubility rules, and we can actually predict the states of matter of our products. The first solubility rule says that all sodium, potassium, and ammonium salts are soluble in water. Potassium acetate is a potassium salt. It's soluble in water. The second rule says that all acetates and nitrates are soluble in water. Well, potassium acetate is an acetate. So the first two rules are telling you that this compound is soluble in water. So we're going to put an AQ next to the potassium acetate. What about the strontium sulfate? As I roll down this table, I see that most sulfates are soluble. But then it says except. And the exception for the sulfate is that calcium, barium, lead 2, and strontium are exceptions. So sulfates are soluble except strontium sulfate. So if it's not soluble, it won't dissolve in water. If it's not soluble, it's going to be a solid. It is insoluble. There's my precipitation reaction. I've mixed two aqueous solutions together to make a solid. And what I've written now is a molecular equation. What I can do next now is do a complete ionic equation. And the complete ionic equation simply shows all the ions in solution. And I've actually already started doing that. Below my molecular equation, I actually show some of my ions in solution. The strontium acetate is aqueous. So that means it's broken apart into the strontium ion, which is aqueous, and the acetate ion, which is aqueous. Now, there are going to be two acetate ions, because strontium acetate contains two acetates. The potassium sulfate has the potassium ion, which is aqueous, and the sulfate ion, which is aqueous. But there are going to be two potassium ions because the potassium sulfate contains two potassiums. So on my reactant side, I have a strontium ion and two acetate ions, and two potassium ions and a sulfate ion. All of those ions are aqueous. The compounds have dissociated in water. The strontium sulfate has not dissociated. It's a solid. It's the precipitate. So if it's not dissolved in water, it's not broken apart into its ions. So I'm just going to leave this be as SRSO4 solid. And then my potassium acetate as a product is aqueous, so it is dissociated. That means I'm going to have two potassium ions in solution and two acetate ions. In solution. There's my complete ionic equation. It has shown that my aqueous solutions have dissociated into their component ions and that the solid, the precipitate, has not. So now the final thing we have to do is do a net ionic equation.
Well, the net ionic equation shows just what's changing. Another way to say this is that the net ionic equation excludes the things that are staying the same. So what's staying the same? Well, if you take a look, I have two acetate ions at the beginning, and I have two acetate ions at the end. Those haven't changed. I also have two potassium ions at the beginning and two potassium ions at the end. Those haven't changed. Those are your spectator ions. The spectator ions are the ions that are not changing during a process. They're not actually playing the game. They're just watching. So the net ionic equation would show everything but the spectator ions. So in this case, my strontium ion and my sulfate ion, those are not spectators. And my product, which is a solid, the strontium sulfate, also not spectators. And it should make sense that the net ionic equation for a precipitation reaction would show the formation of a solid, because that was our definition of a precipitation reaction, when aqueous ions came together to form a solid.